Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be a lecture on assessment. The learning objectives for the assessment unit are number one, identify an instructional problem, number two, plan and implement an instructional needs assessment, and three, analyze learner, task, and situational characteristics. No training program is complete without an assessment or evaluation plan. To say that evaluation is the last step of the instructional design process is actually misleading. An evaluation plan should be designed even before the program begins, and it should take place continually throughout the training process. It should also be cyclical, and results should be fed back into the next design phase. The overarching objective is to determine the extent to which a program achieves its stated goals and objectives. The results can be used to inform decision-making to improve the program, revisions to program goals and objectives, budget requests and resource allocation, progress reports to management. The assessment or evaluation plan should answer these key questions. How well are the stated training goals being met? How will the information be collected? How will the data be used to improve the program? The plan should therefore outline the program goals, intended outcomes, methods for gathering and interpreting data, and a plan for how to use that data as evidence to inform decision-making to improve the program. It should also include logistics, such as when and how the evaluation will be conducted. The first step is to define the program in terms of a logic model. A logic model is a way of describing a program showing what the program will do and what it is to accomplish given a particular situation or environment. The simplest form of a logic model consists of inputs, outputs, and outcomes. Inputs are the resources, contributions, and investments that go into the program. The outputs are activities, services, events, and products that reach people who participate or who are targeted. Outcomes are the results or changes for individuals, groups, communities, organizations, or systems. Let's look at this simple example to illustrate the concept of the logic model. Imagine you have a headache, and your goal is to feel better. The headache is the situation. So what would you do? From experience, you know that certain pills help. So you get the pills. These are the inputs. Then you take the pills, the outputs, and as a consequence, the headache goes away and you feel better. The outcome. Now take a moment to review this possible logic model for a software training workshop. The goal of the training is to deliver a workshop to train intake personnel on new EHR software. The arrows show links between inputs, outputs, and outcomes. Please note that this is only one possible logic model for this program. Different organizational goals might lead to different versions. Why do we need logic models when developing assessment and evaluation plans? The logic model is a framework for describing the relationships between investments, activities, and results. By systematically identifying every aspect of a program and the relationships between them, a blueprint for an evaluation is developed. The logic model helps us match evaluation to the program, determine what and when to measure, Decide on the type of evaluation, process, and or outcomes. Determine the testing instruments and procedures. Prioritize where to spend evaluation resources. We can assess both how the training was implemented as well as the student outcomes. The questions that the evaluation is designed to answer will determine its focus and scope. For example, if you are interested in whether the workshop's activities are delivered as intended to the target population, this is called process evaluation and takes place during implementation. However, if you are interested in determining whether the program has successfully produced the desired changes or outcomes in the target population, this is called outcome evaluation. In addition, if these process or outcome evaluations are conducted to gather data that will inform program improvement, it's a formative evaluation. And if the data is used to make a summary judgment about a program's performance, it's a summative evaluation. For each evaluation goal or objective, 
we need to identify evaluation questions, collection methods, and the instruments used for data collection. Let's return to our example of a software training workshop. Given this logic model, can you think of some possible process and outcome evaluation questions? Here are some evaluation questions we can answer to tell us how the program was implemented, and these answers would be used to inform improvements. This describes both a process and formative assessment. What amount of money and time were invested? Were all the sessions delivered? How many persons were trained? Was the intended population trained? How well were the sessions delivered? What was the level of participation? Were participants satisfied? We must next think of the evidence needed to answer these questions. The first four questions are clearly quantitative, and a typical plan will include instruments, such as using budget and personnel records, and workshop attendance registers. The last three questions are more qualitative and would require that the trainer develop specific instruments to capture what could be very subjective data. And here are some possible outcome evaluation questions. To what extent did skills improve? To what extent did behaviors improve? Which participants demonstrated a change in skills and behaviors? Our outcome questions are all looking at student performance. Your starting point for a learner assessment plan is the learning objectives that describe the skills, behaviors, or attitudes you hope to change. If you do not have learning objectives, then they must be developed at this stage. Learning objectives should be checked against these three questions. Does the objective focus on student performance? Is the task measurable or observable? What criteria will I use to establish that the objective has been reached? Consider this objective. By the end of the workshop, participants will be able to recall the steps of the intake process. For this objective, we can choose to assess the participants with an oral test, but given the nature of the task, we might prefer to observe the participants' performance as they actually use the computer to complete the task. Often, multiple assessment methods can be used to measure the same skills and behaviors, and where possible, it is best to use more than one method to authentically measure student learning. These may include performance-based tasks, paper and pencil tests, or oral assessments. Tests or quizzes. The criteria for achieving the learning objective may include a specified increase in the number of correct responses as compared to a pretest or a specified number of students who are able to attain a targeted level of correct responses. Observation of student performance. The criteria for achieving the learning objective could include specific student behaviors, for example, to accomplish a specific task. Student writing. Criteria may include specific content knowledge, or structural characteristics, such as organization, development, or other specified features. Student talking. The criteria may include the level of participation, specific content knowledge, specific thinking skills, or other indications of student progress, as indicated by student comments. Self-assessment. You may ask students to assess their own learning as a form of assessment. Possible criteria would include student comments, written statements, visual indicators, or other indications from students regarding their progress towards the learning goals. A rubric is a set of criteria used for assessing a piece of work or performance. It also includes levels of potential achievement for each criterion, and there will often be numerical scores for each level of achievement and a summary score that may be produced by adding the scores for each criterion. The rubric may also include space to describe the reasons for each score. Here's an excerpt from a performance task rubric. Shown here is one criterion and the corresponding levels of possible achievement. The levels of achievement are listed from highest to lowest achievement. Now let's return to our outcome evaluation questions to complete the assessment plan. The questions were, to what extent did skills improve? To what extent did behaviors improve? Which participants demonstrated a change in skills and behaviors? Here's how we could collect the evidence needed to answer these questions. 
evaluation results can open up a discussion about what works well and what doesn't in your training program. Examining the results closely, you can learn invaluable lessons about your program's strengths and weaknesses and how to make changes that will improve its effectiveness. You should start by comparing your program and learning objectives with the outcome data and determining the degree to which each objective was met. If some objectives have not been achieved, it is important to investigate the reasons. Alternatively, you may find objectives that were met and possibly exceeded. Examine the factors that helped you meet those objectives. Understanding why you succeeded can lead to recommendations that may help you meet other program objectives. The best way to communicate evaluation results is to create a report that outlines and describes the objectives and outcomes, how data was collected and the sources, for example participants, barriers, and recommendations. In this unit, we explored a process a trainer can use to assess the quality of a training program. This process starts with the defining of the program as a logic model and using that description to identify the areas of the program that should be assessed. If followed closely, you are likely to be able to get accurate data that can be used for decision-making to improve the program, revisions to program goals and objectives, budget requests and resource allocation, progress reports to management.